So up until now we've discussed the efforts of Mikhail Gorbachev to try and reform communism within the Soviet Union itself. But this was actually going to have its most dramatic impact on the communist countries of Eastern Europe that officially were not part of the Soviet Union, but very clearly were under the influence of Moscow. And um, essentially that their demand for greater reform uh, was going to lead to the collapse of communism first in Eastern Europe and then for it to spread to the Soviet Union itself. Of course, the Soviet Union, as we've already seen in this class in our previous lecture, um, had a long tradition of intervening in countries where it felt communism was under threat. This became known as the Brezhnev Doctrine. So in some ways, kind of the Soviet counterpoint to the Truman Doctrine. The Truman Doctrine was about stemming the spread of communism outside the Soviet Union and other countries. The Brezhnev Doctrine was something that uh, the Soviet leader, Leonid Brezhnev, introduced in 1968 after his intervention in Czechoslovakia, which basically said if socialism or communism was under threat in any country, uh, then the Soviet Union had the right to send its soldiers in to uh, suppress that threat and to support the communist government. The kind of end of that doctrine came with the Soviet intervention in Afghanistan, because by the early 1980s, it was very obvious to the Soviet Union that Afghanistan was going to be was, was very, very expensive conflict. And that ultimately, they were not able to defeat the Islamic rebels in Afghanistan. And therefore, the, the, the Brezhnev Doctrine was damaging to the Soviet Union because they simply couldn't contain um, the, the anti-communist forces in, in a variety of countries. Obviously, Brezhnev himself dies in 1982. And when Gorbachev becomes leader in 1985, he makes it very clear that the, the policy of Soviet armed intervention in countries where they don't like developments will not be continued. And that, of course, gives hope to the various nationalist groups of Eastern Europe. So this, the collapse of communism in Eastern Europe begins um, a combination of, first, there's anger with communism in general, uh, anger with the perceived failures of the communist system across Eastern Europe, combined with nationalist hopes. Many of the people of Eastern Europe whose nations had been independent after the, the First World War were frustrated by the fact that, you know, clearly, even though they were in theory independent countries, they very clearly were under the thumb of Moscow um, and they wanted to break away from not just communism, but from what they perceived essentially as Russian control of their nations as well. <clears throat> and one of the, the first countries where this was really even began it was, in, was in Poland. So in 1980, Lech Walesa, pictured here, who was an electrician, um, established a trade union movement called Solidarity uh, that was essentially calling for a reform of communism within Poland. You might remember that Poland itself uh, was a relatively liberal um, communist state within the, the, the confines of communism as it was defined in Eastern Europe, uh, dating back to its own kind of uh, reform efforts from in the 1950s. Uh, but nevertheless, there was chronic shortage of certain goods. Uh, there was a great deal of inflation in Poland. So goods were expensive. They're hard to come by. Uh, people oftentimes had a hard time making a decent living in Poland. And so Lech Walesa and his solidarity movement was demanding for political change and emerges as a very significant political force in Poland. However, their efforts to protest the hardship by the communist regime, well, firstly, the fact that as the solidarity movement grows, the fact that the Soviet Union does not automatically send in troops shows you that the Brezhnev Doctrine, even while Brezhnev was still alive, had to be reconsidered because simply the Soviet Union could not afford to become involved militarily in all these different countries. Um, so the Solidarity Movement opposed or the, the uh, hardships of communism, was demanding a reform of communism towards greater free market economic, econo economics and democracy. Um, but they were suppressed. So in 1981, a Polish general, Jaruz Jaruzelski, uh, seized control in Poland, suppressed um, the, the Solidarity Movement and established a military dictatorship. But in some ways, it kind of speaks volumes, the fact that, I mean, a trade union movement is a movement of working class laborers. That was supposed to be the very group that the Communist Party was fighting for. It was their interest that, in theory, communism was supposed to be introduced in order to defend. And the fact that they are the ones who are kind of leading the charge against communism in Poland um, kind of says volumes about how communism was perceived to fail very badly in Poland itself. So suppressed, however, suppressed in 1981 by the advent of um, General, General Jaruzelski and his dictatorship. Uh, and, and for a time, the Solidarity Movement is imprisoned. Lech Walesa is actually imprisoned for a period of time. He is released. He's allowed to return to his job as an electrician. He wins the Nobel Peace Prize in 1983, uh, but he doesn't go to accept because he's afraid this, the Polish government will not allow him back into Poland if he does. Gorbachev's reforms in the Soviet Union, so obviously Gorbachev becomes leader in 1985, and um, that gives greater encouragement to the Solidarity Movement. 
Um, there was growing unrest in Poland. So in 1987, Jaroleski organizes a referendum essentially to get the Polish people to approve uh, price rises that the government has to introduce because it's simply going bankrupt. Um, most of the people vote, not surprisingly, vote against uh, the, the, this price rises and therefore Jaroselski decides to simply implement them anyway. Um, that leads to growing frustration with the government and uh, more and more demands for reform and solidarity emer emerges as a new political or re-emerges as a political force in 1988, begins to demand new elections. Um, Jaroselski realizes that the Gorbachev government will not help him suppress the solidarity movement and therefore he has to come to some kind of compromise with them. So in 1989, when I say free elections, elections do take place. They were free to some extent, except that the, the, so the, the Communist Party reserved 65% of the seats for themselves in the new Polish parliament. So at least initially, this was an effort by Jaroselski to try and look like he was giving some level of choice to people, uh, that the Solidarity Party could contest some of the elections. Um, but in reality, trying to retain power himself. However, the, 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 the significant amount of uh, votes that Solidarity got where they were in competition with the Communist Party made it very clear that um, Jaroselski's rule in Poland was, was, was limited. Actually, Jaroselski uh, became the new president of Poland. So the office of president was created in 1989. And Lech Walesa and his allies decided it would be better to try and accommodate Jaroselski in the short term. So Jaroselski became the first new president of Poland in 1989, um, but by 1990, with the events that were taking place elsewhere in Eastern Europe, it was obvious that the communist state control of Poland was over, and when free elections were finally held for the president, see, the office of the president in 1990, 1990 uh, Lech Walesa, uh, Jaroszewski resigns, he knows he's not going to win the election, and uh, Lech Walesa becomes president of Poland. So Poland, largely through agi kind of agitation, demands for reform and change, without any bloodshed, and of course the key point, without Soviet willingness to interfere mil militarily, uh, sees communism collapse first and foremost in Poland. And this begins to spread to other countries in Europe as well. Um, so the events in Poland, uh, by, so by the middle of 1985, it was obvious that Poland was on, the, on marching towards becoming a free market democratic society. Um, this encouraged other communist nations in, in Eastern Europe as well. On top of that, the events of Tiananmen Square, I'm not sure how familiar you were, but in 1989, June 1989, there was protests in China against the communist government, kind of along the lines of what was taking place in Eastern Europe. And the Chinese government uh, essentially cracked down, sent in soldiers, opened fire, and a couple of hundred people were killed in Tiananmen Square. Um, to this day, the Chinese government kind of hushes up what happened at Tiananmen Square. If you were ever in China and tried to Google Tiananmen Square, you wouldn't be able to get access to discussions of what actually happened. But obviously most of the Western world was aware of what happened in Tiananmen Square. And that further kind of discredited communism. Essentially communism is having to use guns and tanks to suppress people in order to maintain its hold on power. In Hungary, Hungary was also a relatively moderate communist state in terms of the, the communist control was not was had been kind of diluted. Um, again, dating back to the rule of uh, uh, of Kadar from 1956 onwards, um, and people like as in Poland, people began demanding more change. One sign of this came in in, in May 1989. The uh, Hungarian government opened its border with Austria. Um, traditionally, Hungary had stopped people fleeing to Austria. Austria is a Western country. The border was opened. Um, oh, forgive my, it sounds like my daughter just woke up. That's what the crying is in the background. Uh, so forgive me for that. Um, and also there was a greater discussion of what happened in 1956. The, the communist government of Hungary was essentially was forced to admit that the execution of Imre Nagy, who had been the, the, the reform-minded prime minister in 1956, uh, who was executed in 1958, that had been illegal, that hundreds of his supporters had been also illegally executed as a result. And people began demonstrating in terms of commemorating um, Imre Nagy and his contributions to uh, Hungary and his efforts to reform Hungary. Essentially, as, as more and more the protests took place, the Communist Party felt they had no choice but to grant free elections, as took place in Poland. They were voted out of power. Um, and Soviet symbols in Hungary were destroyed. So Poland or Hungary uh, becomes the second country in, in Eastern Europe to, to move away from communism. And this is, again, bear in mind, this is all taking place in a very short period of time over the, the, the summer of 1989. Czechoslovakia was a little bit different in that there was the, 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 the Polish government and the Hungarian government might be kind of considered on the more moderate, reform-minded side of, of communism. 
Czechoslovakia, however, was governed by hardliners who had been put in place in 1968, who were actually initially determined not to allow protesters to kind of emerge and, 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 and challenge um, their hold on power. The problem was Gorbachev made it very clear that the Russian government would not interfere and the Soviet government would not interfere if there was a, if there was a protest against uh, the Czechoslovakian government. And a group of reformers led by a playwright called Vaclav Havel uh, demanded that the uh, communist government initially allow them some say in government and then to hold free elections. In the face of these demands, the Czechoslovakian Communist Party had a debate about whether to use the army to suppress these, the, the growing protests in Czechoslovakia. And by a very narrow mo- vote, uh, the Communist Party decided not to use the army and therefore essentially to give in to the demand to allow free elections in, in uh, Czechoslovakia, what became known as the Velvet Revolution. So the single party state was dismantled. Free elections took place in December 1989. Uh, uh, Havel became president of the new uh, Czechoslovakian state and Ducek became chairman. Ducek, you might remember, was the reform-minded communist of, from, the, from the, the Prague Spring of 1968. Um, he he was also his I guess contributions to Czech uh, uh, liberty were recognised. He became ch- chairman of the Czech Parliament. Although Dubček didn't his career didn't last much longer because he was still considered to be a communist, and most of those people who participated in the Velvet Revolution uh, were opposed to communism in any kind of form. But nevertheless, the result is by the end of 1989, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, and Poland have very very quickly overthrown communism um, in their countries and we're going to see this spread to the other nations of Eastern Europe as well.